What's going on, y'all? It's really good to see everybody today, and good to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Spilly, and I'm the hula hoop guy in Baltimore City. Um, thank you. Along with my partner, Jess Rochella, I'm also an urban farmer. Uh, we have a small urban farm, thank you, in East Baltimore, uh, on about a quarter acre where we live. Um, it's also where we have our hula hoop factory. Um, so I'm going to tell you what my idea is. I have a big idea today. And then I'm going to explain it because it really, it takes a little bit of explaining to get the full gist of it, although we could probably write a book on it. Um, but then, because it's, I believe it's very important with ideas to also uh, put them into action, otherwise they're pretty empty, I'm going to actually put this idea into action and break a world record right here during my speech. So... Uh, so my idea is this, I believe that we need to unleash revolutionary imagination. All right, and so what I mean by this is in life there are so many imagination robbers. And really when I've been telling people about this idea, just saying that phrase, imagination robbers, puts enough ideas into people's head about what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to even get into it because of that. I feel like even right now as we're communicating, each of you are having different ideas about what imagination robbers are. But they start coming into our life at a very young age. Uh, you know, kids naturally, they're, they're the most adept at just a natural level of uh, revolutionary imagination. It comes to them just uh, free and easy, generally. Um, but even at a young age, we start uh, coming into contact with imagination robbers. And after a while, the imagination robbers begin to have an effect on our brain. And, and they are not even necessarily the biggest part of the problem. After a while, the problem become the, becomes the cops in our head. So. Uh, the idea is unleashing revolutionary imagination as a means to all kinds of other ends. And I want to just talk to you a bit about two areas of my work and Jess's work uh, where revolutionary imagination really comes into play and is very critical. Um, and the first is urban farming. Um, so. We got our house about four years ago. It was a vacant house, had laid vacant for a while, it had gone foreclosed in East Baltimore. And uh, the house was a total piece of work, a total uh, renovation job, and the backyard was a total mess. Um, and neither of us had really any experience with farming. So we started from scratch with this. This was four years ago. And I'm a Baltimore City boy, so a row house uh, kind of mentality about farming, really not knowing anything. But we, we put our heart and our soul into it. Four years down the line, I want to tell you that we grew in the last year over a ton of food and medicine in our backyard, our side yard, our front yard. And we haven't even started with the fruit trees. The fruit trees just went in this last year. Now to go from a point, and, and with very re little resources by the way, uh, we did all of this. Uh, we try and find almost everything we get free. So we were able to unleash revolutionary imagination. If we didn't have that element, we, we wouldn't have even able, been able to get started. We certainly wouldn't have been able to do the things that we're doing. Second place is the hula hoops. So. Uh, I want to just let you know, admit to you, that even though I'm known as the hula hoop guy, 
and I got all kinds of hula hoop chops. Um, in fact, I have a Guinness World Record in hula hooping. Um, I want you to know that I was 39 years old before I even knew how to hula hoop at all. Uh, I was a, you know what, I was a pretty athletic kid even. And it was one of the big sources of embarrassment for me as a kid that I couldn't hula hoop. Uh, and it's a long story about how I got into it and how I got into it to the degree to that you see here. But the first idea that really got me was when I realized in, at age 39 that size does make a difference. <laughs> so there's a rumor out there that size doesn't make a difference. But one of the things that I realized with hula hoops is it runs counterintuitive. So uh, a lot of people think maybe a smaller hula hoop would be easier. But it turns out, first law of physics, who thought? Uh, body in motion stays in motion. The momentum of a larger hoop makes it a little bit easier. So I hope to see everybody here come by the hula hoop stand at some point, And I can show you that you too can hula hoop whether you know it or not. We'll teach you. Um, so as I was getting into this hula hoop thing, um, there, was, there was more and more of, a, of an imagination that was being unleashed through the work that I was doing on, you know, on the streets of Baltimore. We take our hula hoops to schools, to churches, to uh, city parks, to city hall, to um, schools all over the place. Uh, and farmers markets and I started to realize that uh, I started to just get in touch with that kind of childlike uh, sense of imagination work, especially working with so many kids and also adults who started to feel like a kid momentarily while they were hooping and so with the hula hoops I just had this crazy idea that I might be able to uh, fulfill a childhood dream of mine, which was, you know, to get in the Guinness Book of World Records, right? Um, and I did that. I'm actually, I'm very proud of that achievement. So I want to just show you this. This is my Guinness World Record that I got. Thank you. But you know what? The thing is, as proud as I am of this, and as much as this is like an ego thing for me, it really you know, uh, makes me feel good about myself. The thing that is more powerful about it is that the fact that now I have this and with the work out there that I do, when kids see it and when kids hear about it, they get this wild, revolutionary imagination, I like to call it. Um, and all of a sudden, the kids start saying, even though I'm tricking and doing amazing things, the thing that I start hearing mo more often than anything else is, watch me, watch me. And the gaze turns back, uh, and it's a beautiful thing. So um, I just wanted to leave you with that about the revolutionary imagination, and I want to put it into play right now because I want to break a record right here on stage in front of your very eyes. How often do you get to see a world record or, or do it? Okay. So the record that I'm going to break is for the fastest construction of a Baltimore snowman <laughs> balanced on my head with a kick up. All right. So I don't see any time here, but I'm sure... We can figure that out when we look at the video. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start. Oh, so the, it's a timed thing. I'm trying to do it the fastest. It starts when I start construction of the Baltimore snowman, and it ends after three rotations of the hula hoop after the kick-up. All right, so here we go. Fastest time was yesterday in practice. I did it in a minute and a half. <laughs> now. All right, so one thing you should know about this is that even though it's cool that 
I have a Guinness World Record. That's such a branded thing. I mean, who's to say that Guinness has the skinny on all records? I mean, I bet you everybody in this room has set at least one record. But you gotta invent them. You gotta just think outside the box. You gotta go there with it. So, there's the double snowman. This trick was named by a kid on the streets of Baltimore. I really, I thought that this was just not possible at all. And I finally did it. And he was like, oh, cool, a Baltimore snowman. Thank you very much. Go ahead and unleash your revolutionary imagination. It's going to be the key. They, they asked me if I would do this at the end, so I said I'd try it. All right, thank you very much. Peace.